We're here inside of the 49ers Museum with one of the most recent, one of two of the most recent inductees into the 49ers Hall of Fame, Patrick Willis. Patrick, just looking back at your career, 11 seasons with the 49ers, and I had to have a note card for this one. Seven-time Pro Bowler, five-time All-Pro, NFL Defensive Rookie of the Year, made the NFL All-Decade team. When you were drafted back in 2007, did you ever envision your career being as decorated as it is? Uh, man, that's a great question. Um, truthfully, you know, I, I never thought about it a whole lot, um, just other than, you know, I just wanted to make sure that I left my mark um, on the game um, here, here at this organization. And in order to do that, you know, I had to be consistent um, every day, every game, um, each season. And not knowing how long, you know, uh, you're guaranteed to play, um, I just say, you know, today be the Last day, I just wanted to be my best. So um, with that being said, I just tried to go out and give it everything I had and hear the results. <laughs> Good mentality to have, but just looking at your career, eight seasons with the 49ers, I'm sure a lot of games, a lot of teammates, but is there a memory, that main memory that sticks out when you just look back at that career and you're just like, that moment just always comes to mind? You know, I wish I could say um, one, one play particularly or one game, it really just have to be um, the transitional periods. What I mean by that is like my first four seasons here with the Niners from 2007 to 2010, uh, we were 500 or below, and that's tough. You know, coming, you know, each off season you grinding, and so it wasn't until 2011, 12, 13 season, the second part of my career where we began to win that really. Um, made the appreciation of all that that you went through before um, that much more worth it. So there's a story that I found out, and I want you to help me out with this. There was a teacher that basically said that, you know, your chances of getting into the NFL are very slim, less than 1%. And you told her that you will be a part of that 1% to make it to the highest level oh. of playing the game. <laughs> yeah. uh, being that young and having that mentality and just knowing that that's that what's that's what you wanted to do. Where did that come from? How, how, give me a little detail about that. I think I was eight years old at the time watching Monday Night Football, and they would say if you can see yourself or if you can envision yourself, then it's possible. And I never forget watching Monday Night Football and you know seeing the ball kick off and just seeing all the cameras go off because back then uh, Monday Night Football was like the Super Bowl, and like especially when you only had three channels like I did. So anytime Monday Night Football would come on, uh, you know you'd be excited and seeing that night, uh, particularly uh, being at my grandmother's house, I just looking at TV and I just remember saying to myself like. I'm gonna do that. Um, I saw myself running down the field as if that was me, and, I, and from that point on, around eight, I just told myself that I was going to be a professional athlete, that I was gonna be um, an NFL player. And so now I'm in eighth grade, and we have my guidance counselor, you know, doing her job, um, asked me, you know, what I wanted to do. And I was like, well, I'm trying to go to NFL, and in order to go to the NFL, I think you gotta go to college. And so, you know, I was like, she asked me what I wanted to do, and I said, well, first, I wanna be a professional athlete, and before I could get it out, and she's like, well, you know, less than 1%, you know, does this. And I said, well, I guess I'll be in that less than 1%. So it just come from just having a vision for myself and just not being denied. And then a decade and some change later, here you are being drafted by the San Francisco 49ers. <laughs> and I just think that story and that that drive and that passion of seeing what you wanna do, I think that can resonate with a lot of people, whether it is your aspirations are to play in the NFL or elsewhere, but is there a quote or maybe words of wisdom that fuel you? There'd be three. One from Coach Singletary, Mike Singletary, he once told me, he said, you have to earn the right to be great. And um, I'll never forget him telling me that one day. The next would be Bruce Lee, his, his favorite um, philosophy always quotes like, be water. You know, and I think being water, you have to be able to adapt. You know, you put water in a space and it becomes, you know, whatever you put it in. And I feel like that's kind of how my life is always been. And another one would be from a guy named Miles. This is kind of like a, when he says, um, if what you see is not what you saw, then what you see is only temporary. So I guess what I'm saying is whatever you see in front of you, uh, don't let it stop you from reaching what it is that you saw. So.
fantastic <laughs> words to live by, fantastic <laughs> quotes, and I honestly would expect nothing less of you. And I say that because you were that teammate that I feel I asked you about a quote that fuels you, but you were that teammate that seemed to be fueling your teammates a lot. You were the king of those pregame speeches. <laughs> but with that, I wanna know what was the recipe for a perfect Patrick Willis pregame speech? I, truthfully, it was just something that came from within. Um, I tried to write things the night before, especially after they kept on asking. But then I was like, all right, maybe I need to write something down. This is what I'm going to say. And each time I would write something down, I would get up there and it would never be, uh, I would never say what I, what I, what I would write down. So um, yeah, so it would just come from within. And truthfully, the recipe was just knowing um, what I was willing to give to my teammates and, and just looking at them before the game and just you know, feeling that energy and saying, well, hey, this is what it's going to take. I thought it was a one-time thing and you were just so good at it. They were like, let's have a yeah. good <laughs> Yes, yes. <laughs> well, you were known for being everywhere on the field, whether you were dropping back in coverage, you were finding your way into the backfield. You literally just were everywhere. But with that, were there any telltale signs that maybe helped you adjust or be able to make plays on the field? that you saw when you were playing? You know, you would get you get certain tells. Obviously you study film and you know you see formations from the offenses, but where a lot of my play come from was as as most know, you know, my, my feet or you know were, were a big issue. And so for me, uh, especially when it come on turf or just being able to stop certain ways, I always had to be a few steps ahead of the play um, before it happened, meaning like I would literally get the call, I would check the formation out, and I would analyze the, the offense, and I would say, all right, this is, they can only do this, they can only do this as an offense, and this play, you know, depending on who I'm guarding or having to cover, he can only do these things. So I had to be steps ahead of, of whoever it was I was going against so that, you know, they couldn't, you know, have one up on me because of my feet. All right, Pat, we got a really tough one for you, okay? So you notched 20 sacks over your NFL career. Looking back at those, who would you say was the quarterback that you got the most satisfaction getting to? I'd probably say it'd probably be Eli. We played college ball together. I was a freshman, a true freshman. When he was a senior at Ole Miss. And my first practice, and I come off the ball, and Eli, you know, drops back to pass, and just working good mechanics, I act as if I'm, you know, swipe the ball. I'm, I'm not gonna hit the ball, but I act as if I am. And I never forget, like, getting ripped by the coaches, the head coach. I mean, they would, I mean, I literally just went by him. As soon as I went by him, they would, I just, all I heard was, you work, I mean, you freshmen stay away from here. Don't you ever get close to him? And I just remember being like, hey, what did I do? I didn't touch him. And so uh, now fast forward, here we are, you know, playing against one another. And um, and I finally get a chance to, you know, get my sack on him. And I'm like, yeah, nobody here to save you now. So um, he, he, would, he would probably be um, that one uh, amongst others, but yeah, for sure. That, that that's one. the one that sticks out. Yeah, Being yeah. able to finally get that rejection, <laughs> so to speak. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Another one that was probably, this doesn't get recorded because uh, it was preseason, but it, was, it would be going against tackling Brett Favre. Or I had a gut blitz in a preseason game against Brett Favre. And you know, preseason, you don't, you're not really trying to hurt a person or whatnot, but I never forget coming up on a gut blitz. And Brett Favre was kind of old at the time, or now you know he's with Minnesota, he's older at the time. And I never forget hitting him. And I felt bad. Like, I felt bad when I hit him. And, if, and when I heard him hit the ground, I just felt like, I kind of cringed for him, like when I heard him go boom, boom like that. I was like, ah, man, my bad, man. I'm like, I, I didn't mean to do you like that. I'm like, man, you kind of old. But then he kind of got some redemption later on that season or whatnot, which a lot of people um, don't know. But it has somebody has put a video up. It shows him making a block downfield, and I'm not ashamed of it. It happens sometimes, but that that hit he had, he didn't make a block. He actually just had a hit and. It was kind of late after the fact when I play already did, but Brett Favre have he have a few of these I've come to know, come to know, and he hit me and knocked me down, and I never forget not knowing who it was until he was watching film the following um, Monday, and that's when I found out who it was who knocked me down and uh, uh, out in the field of play. So Brett Favre got his redemption on yeah, Patrick Willis. Yeah, Lewis. yeah, he, he got it back. So so if I ever had him in a sit down interview, I, is that one of the questions I could ask? Like, do you remember that moment? Yeah, do you think I, he would yeah, remember? I think so. Okay, I'm not. Maybe I wouldn't. Maybe to him, it probably wouldn't. You know, it may, may not be a big deal uh, or whatnot. But to me, um, him 
him doing that, I, I, I'll never forget it to the point where I'm like, man, if I had the opportunity to get him back today, I probably would. So. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure it is a big deal to him and it's a big deal for us to have you here. Thank you so much for the time. And again, congratulations on being the newest inductee into the 49ers Hall of Fame. Yes, thank you.